see somebody. I don't see nobody sc even scratching their head this morning. <laughs> oh, there one. <laughs> Brother Corey. Praise the Lord for Corey, isn't it? The Lord brought him through. Great things he has done. Huh? Psalms 29. Okay, Psalms 29. Psalms 29. Okay. And read, Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory is thunder. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of madness. I want to stop right there. Uh, we thank the Lord for he is all powerful, all knowing. Amen. And uh, he's worthy of the glory and the praise. And he do thunder, he talks to us when we seek him and knock on the door. Um, he's just full of strength, his imagination. And his word is quick and powerful. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. He gives glory and strength. Look for the scripture we are saying, verse 2. O perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer. The promise of God. Ready? Ready? Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer. The promise of God, the body of Seven. Twenty-nine and thirty. Psalm one hundred seven. Twenty-nine and thirty. All right. And <clears throat> he makes the he makes the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof stick are still. They are they are glad because they be quiet. So he bringeth them unto their desired haven. I just like to thank the Lord for for these verses. Because when the storm arises in her, in, in my life, I can say it, it is the Lord that uh, that calms the storm, and and, and it, it is Him that uh, brings peace to my being. Amen. And forty to forty three, I'd like to read also. Who is who is a wise? Who so is wise? And will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving, the loving kindness of the Lord. Amen. And I just like to thank Amen. the Lord for that this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, let us pray. Oh dear great Father, thank you for this beautiful day that you had truly given us. And Father, we here. We we, we, we we want to to, want to pray you even now and for and for, and for, and for all things because it, it's all because of you and and finally we, we want to thank you for the um a many blessing from father that they, 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 they you have given us and even for and for and for and for our often father we we, 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 we want we want to thank you that we can 
truly just give back a small portion of, of the many uh, blessings that they, 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 they that, that you have given us, Father Ben, because we we know that it would be used for your glory. And Father, we've been asking that, 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 that you would just truly uh, undertake uh, uh, for the uh, spirit that, 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 that you would, would, would hide him behind the cross, Father, and and that he would, you would bring in the, the, the word that, that that you have given us. And then, and then, 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 then Father, for us, uh, Father, we, we just ask them that, that we would get true to uh, heard, heard your word. And then, Father, that, that, that we would true to up, to, up, to, up, to, up, to, uh, obey, obey thee. And, and Father, that, and, and we, 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 want to, we, we want to thank you again for the thing that I have, I have given the, 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 the tithes and, and offer. And Father, and we, we know it. it in in in, 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 in uh, none of us, but but it's all to you. And Father, even now, we're gonna be careful to give you all the honor and praise and glory because in the precious name of the Son Jesus, Amen. 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 Okay, saints. Uh, we'll continue on with the message I gave a couple of Sundays ago. On the uh, signs of the times, acceptance of immorality. If you did not get that, raise your hand. We might have a few more left, and uh, <clears throat> they can get it. We may have an old one, signs of the times. This one is just titled a little different. We do have an additional scripture. A couple other areas we want to focus in on. But if you have that, let's all turn to Matthew 24, 12. day and time. We all have that. Let's read that together and then we have a word of prayer. Let us read. And, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Heavenly Father, we pray, Lord, that you would undertake uh, for this message today, that you give wisdom, grace to our hearts and all the heroes that are here, including myself, and all that you will speak to us and that the Spirit of God will open up uh, our understanding to all that you have to tell us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, this, uh, this area of Scripture, and uh, if anyone has been watching the news and the various changes and, I mean, the social, you know, there have always been injustices and, and problems in a subtle way, but never so, well, I guess you say, prolific and right in your face with it. The things that people are saying, even the people that we sort of look up to, especially in terms of lawgivers, and uh, maybe it's because we now have a access to, it used to be a thing where people had to read everything or hear something on the radio, well, you would give us so much. You might read what a senator said or some political individual said in the newspapers. Of course, it would be spread out at the barbershop and the, at the beauty parlor and in the streets and as people were talking. But now, in today's time, you see it coming, what? Right from the horse's mouth. And some of the stuff maybe that was written years ago, maybe it could have been questionable. You know, sometimes the report is saying what so-and-so said. Maybe it wasn't what they said. Maybe they added a little bit here and there. They're still doing that today, by the way. Still doing it. So you almost have to say, look, I want to hear it from them now. Not don't write something and then tell me that's what they said. You know, people said in an article that they said this. And then you find out that the person who wrote the article either added a few words, took out, left out a, a bunch of words, or paraphrase whatever they said and, and then 
So you don't know what you're getting. So, but in the day's time, you heard the person say it themselves, right? Now when you look at it, it's not like they said that so-and-so said, no, he said it because I, look, I was looking right at him when they said it. And it. But then you almost have to be careful because they only take clips. They don't give the whole uh, sense of what they're saying, how it impacts what they may have said before, what came after what they said. So we have a, 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 a place in time that we don't know what kind of information <coughs> we're getting. We have to question it. We do have to question it. And, but one thing we don't have to question is when we read God's word. Amen. The, uh, the message the brother Cole gave on, we let God be true and every man is a, oh. he's a liar. I think it was something we were looking at last night. We were talking about the insurrection. <coughs> and the guy was interviewing the man. And he said, uh, he went into the Capitol. He said, the police held the door open for me. <laughs> and then I hit, no, they was holding the door for when we went in. So they showed the camera. <coughs> want to please nowhere. He just told a bold-faced lie right, and was adamant about it, you know. I said, wow, this is the day and time that we're living in. Well, people have been lying like that all the time, but now that's why the Lord, we, we have to deal with truth. Uh, one one, one uh, Sunday, I might speak on truth, what truth is on, how important it is, but we want to get a feel of what we are in right now what's going on because I'm going to tell you some of the stuff in this last year that we've seen go on and said and done you're wondering you want to pinch yourself is, am, I, is this, am I really seeing this am I really hearing this and uh, and it's what people are accepting so this is why I say that's the sign of a time is what people accept this is why it says and because iniquity that's sin. It's going to abound so much. Now, we're not talking about here in the United States. Remember, I kept saying this where? All over the world. Now, we get news all over the world. It's not what so-and-so said. We're hearing these dignitaries and people in other places saying these things. And supporting iniquity and sin. It's not, I think, they uh, think like that. We can know. We know that they're, they're thinking. So it's abounding. The sinful, the, 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 the people that are dying and being killed, the uh, persecution uh, that we, we see, the massive killings that have been going on. Even with, I started even with ISIS, the brutal brutality in these last days. I mean, just cut people's heads off in the camera and all that kind of stuff. This is. Is what the Lord is saying. Dangerous times, brutality, and it's abounding and abounding and getting more uh, 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 prevalent that we can see these things. And what does that do to a person's heart? What does it do to their, their faith? Because it says here, iniquity shall abound. So what happens? The love of many will get cold. We can get a little cold heard a few things about a couple of uh, what we considered men of God, and then you find out, man, they, they, they're not all what they said they were. You get a little discouraged, don't you? Y'all don't, but I, you know, kind of heartbroken by some of the things I've heard that, that, that were happening, you know, with people you kind of figured that they would stand for something that was solid, and you find out it's not so solid. Because the iniquity is about so what does that do for you? Okay. Yes. We went to the funeral yesterday, right? Who? Uh -huh. Mellons. Yeah. And at the end of the funeral, the wife called all the guys that hung out with him or whatever. And you know, they stood outside, right out there at the gravesite, and took a toast of alcohol. Huh. I've never yeah. seen that in my life. Huh. That's huh. worse than that. I've never seen that. Yeah. Never because iniquity shall abound. That's exactly it. What was that you say you saw, Brother Cole? I will let you tell it because I was, it was told to me, but you said you saw it. Well, you talking about, uh, I was, I was careful because I didn't know who, who was involved in it. Mm -hmm. But when the girl, she said, she said, how are you going to be sending it to me? I said, no, I'm going to send it down like that. So, uh, she said that, uh, Bingo, on the lady. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Wait a minute, first tell them where they at. Tell them, tell them where they are, brother. In the funeral home. In the funeral home, okay. Yeah, who's that? The dead lady. The dead lady? Yeah. Playing bingo. Both of them playing bingo. Still been in the cash and they had to sit up in the chair. In the chair playing bingo. Come on. Yeah. And Wilson did it. Yeah, that was here. So it was here in Petersburg. I say, like I said, I heard something about it, but I heard the brother Cole do about it. But yeah, it was in the funeral. This is the stuff that people are doing and consider. Appropriate, and that's okay. Yep. Because iniquity will abound. I mean, I used to hear Oliver B. Green say they 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 stayed out there drinking and and, and carousing. Raising cane never came to church. He said they ought to have their funeral in, in the bar. That's what he said. But they don't, don't come to the church now. Everybody say he's going to heaven, and he's an angel now, and all this old stuff. But. This is the kind of stuff people consider okay. Iniquity, and we're going to, where it comes from, where it really comes from, we're going to, hopefully, the Lord will, we'll get to it. Not even sure we will have time to get, uh, to get to it, but we should. Iniquity like that, where does it come from? How does it get that way? And us who have been living a while, we've seen some changes, haven't we? Attitudes of people, we've seen some changes. And then you listen, talk to some of the young people. I was looking at some articles. I was trying to figure out all these different generations, the, the, the X generation, the old generation, and, and, and the um, Genesis generation. They got these different generations and the attitudes of the young people that are coming through each one. And, of course, then there's uh, the baby boomer generation. Millennial. Uh, millennial. Millennialists. Gen Z. Yeah, well, the only thing about that is that's man's title of stuff. And that's why I sort of, okay, that's your title for everything. But God has a title for it. But, so I'm just not not saying that that's all it is, but it does give you an, uh, an identity or to, to see the change. We have, we who have been teaching school see the changes in the students. Starting with when, when, uh, when I first started and the attitude of students as time went on. Change, change, change. We find out that, that, that students' attitude changed. I got to the point, I, I remember I used to, now this is within a 10 to 15 year range. My, my job, you had to clean up the, the area afterwards, you know? And so, no problem. Kids said we got to clean up. Everybody had a detail or whatever. Worked fine. Then after a while, it got a little harder and harder to do. And then it got to the point where it's time to clean and here's a broom. And they're looking at the broom like, what is that? <laughs> they don't even know what a broom is. They, ain't got, they don't have no responsibilities at home, nothing. So they can't sweep, they don't clean, they don't wipe nothing up. And this is the change that has, has come through. And then after a while, I got to the point, man, I had to add more time to clean up. First of all, one of the first things I learned is how to sweep, how to hold a dustpan, how to just wipe off stuff, where to put stuff back when you finish. You know, we had to go through it. This is what well, I considered, that was just commonplace. You don't need to talk about that. Well, yes, you do. Nowadays, trash goes in the trash. Yeah, go to the trash. Yeah, don't just dump it in the, any way you want to. They don't, you, you, common sense stuff, common sense, and we take things for granted. And i never forget what really brought, uh, it was one boy that took another, they had some baseball cards or something, and he took the other guy's things. I said, well, man, you can't take something that belongs to somebody else like that. And he looked at me, he said, yes, I can. He took my friend's stuff, so I'm going to take his. He had no idea that I was still wrong. And I said, where do you get started with this? <laughs> they have no idea that taking anything that belongs to somebody is dead wrong. And this is what we take for granted, that people understand these things. They don't. Iniquity is abounding so much that ordinary, everyday things, we can't look at them and say, you know that's wrong. They probably look at them and say, what's wrong about it? 
And they ain't being smart. They're not being smart. They ain't being ugly or, or belligerent. They just don't know. See what I'm saying? And when you get around enough of that, it can wear you down. You know, okay? So this is what I'm saying. Iniquity will abound, but the love of, of many, the love of for Christ, the, even the love for one another. It wasn't just the, the, we're talking about the church here. We're talking about the hearts of men in general. Iniquity is so much that they don't even love one another. We see, he hear the reports how uh, people do, even their own children, their own family members and stuff. He said, where all that come from? It's been growing. The water's boiling now. Remember I told you about the frog in the little water? Got a little warmer. Now it's bubbling. Steam coming up. And the frog is doing a backstroke in it. And they don't care. They don't care. The love of many is waxing cold. Now, let's go on. So, we're talking about acceptance of immoral. We accept it in our societies all over the world. It's accepted. It's okay. We can justify it. Now, we talked about uh, number one, about the decline of uh, uh, moral decline from 2 Timothy. We went over a lot of little topics there. I wanted to just look at just some of the historical pictures of how things came in us. I guess you say in our century, it started with the 17th and 18th century. Um, you see, we have a lot of philosophies that are going around. The, the, the average person might could care less about what philosophical beliefs so, so, so people have. But you see at the ground roots of some of these ad, attitudes and ideas where they're coming from. So we're looking at the 17th, 18th century. And this is what they call it enlightenment Enlightenment, the age of reason. Now, there was an age of faith, believing in the things of God, but now we got to have a rational reason for whatever we say or do. This is what, this is what more religions can, can start growing out of this. It already started believing in other pagan gods, but now we got to rationally reason anything out. So, that means that the uh, teaching about religion of deism, the creator, if he exists, believes in the creator on the basis of reason, but rejected belief on supernatural deity who interacts with humankind. They believe that humans are the true moral force of the universe. So, humanity is more important than the things of God. They put their faith in what? Man. What man's rational reason, his intelligence, all the technology, all of the things that he's been doing. We see technology has grown in the last 20, 30 years. We're seeing stuff now. You ask some young kids, what is this? You can hold up some stuff and say, what is it? Oh, I never see. What is that? You can hold some. You, you ever tried holding up something, like, even like a can opener, anything? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Don't hold up an eight track yeah. or even a cassette. Little, little, little cassette. I guess they get in my truck. He said, what is that? <laughs> what did you do? What did you do with that? Oh, I was looking at someone. They just showed a handle to turn the window. <laughs> what is that? Everything. Automatic. Then after a while, they're going to say, you mean you got to push a button to open the window? You can't just say, open, close? <laughs> they going to look at you and say, you just old. Oh, old. Oh, they used to do that way back when. And they a thousand years old. No. Little five-year-olds, when I was young, I used to do this. <laughs> Five years old, tell me when they were younger. <laughs> yeah, that's this is what, what, what what's happening. So, so they got a, the day. There is no day. They, they don't believe in God, and that philosophy and thinking is is gradually growing. It's growing into the mainstream now. It has been growing since then, but now it's getting even bigger. 
than, than it ever was. So we get to the 1900s. John Dewey. How many heard of John Dewey? That's another problem. If you're really young, you know who John Dewey is. He influenced the education system with humanistic secularism. Secularism. In other words, uh, if that gets back to mankind being secular about doing things, the worldly system of things is more important than anything that's spiritual. The indifference to or rejecting of exclusion of what? Religion and religious consideration. Now, I don't care what. It could be whatever you believe in. That is not important. He said exclude that. All of the so And these are the people who, remember now, these are the people who set the standards for what people do. Because they're in charge. They're the ones on the top with all of this so-called intellectual uh, uh, abilities. We're talking about the higher uh, 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 place of education. Higher, remember I was telling you why, why we should believe the Word of God with these professors and, and, and philosophers and doctors and all they believe in it. They've been, been, been painted with this stuff from years. This is back in the 1900s. And so this stuff was growing. Yeah, folks were going to church and believing in God. But boy, on the other spectrum, it was these educational uh, uh, people full of, full of education that, that, that were following a different path. Some of them was running side by side a little bit. And then after a while, a little bit overcame what was uh, supposed to be religious or belief in the things of God. And the other one was far, far out there. But now they're starting to merge and merge. This is why you ever heard of, uh, uh, what's, what's that, uh, that religion? Um, hmm. Can't th think. Uh, no, this new... Uh, this goes back to the beginning. Remember, I was saying about how they believe that man is is is, is well, Scientology. That's one of them, and there's a whole lot of others that putting man first. Uh, Scientology. You got the uh, new age. Yeah, new age. That's it. The new age movement. Now, well, this is even back when, when Brother Griffin was teaching the religions. You had new age. This is even back then. You had people. Hinduism, Buddhists, those were, this is back in the, in, in, in the early 80s, and this was old stuff then. Their philosophy was to get in, entwined in all of these other religions. It's okay. Then ain't got to call it Buddhism. We just want that thinking to get into that system. This is where the New Age, this New Age sucked in all of that stuff. If you look at the philosophy of the New Age movement, they believe that man is God, and that you become a God, and all this, uh, even from the music to, to everything that's done. They don't make a big deal of it, but people start what? Getting comfortable with it. And so they start following this stuff. Therefore, they were setting them up for all the stuff that's going on now, accepting anything that man feels is right. Uh, remember back... Uh, uh, in those days, man did what was right in whose eyes? Yeah. Our own eyes. See? <clears throat> Setting them up for that, to, to that belief. It, it, it can't just start with a small group of people. It has to be like the COVID. Get so many sick with it. And then you pass it on to somebody, somebody more got sick. And they live. And then you get, you know, infecting everybody until you got a whole epidemic of philosophy and belief that is not godly whatsoever. And we're going to find out in Romans, if we get around to it, hopefully we get to it, that these other things that we are finding ourselves as a result in. This is why you see people talking and thinking like this. I mean, crazy stuff. I mean, we look at it like, man, that's crazy. Say the whole group of people are eating children and all that kind of stuff, and and, 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 and something's going to happen, it don't never happen. I don't, that's all right. They're going to do it next week. You know, and don't even shake, doesn't even dilute their belief whatsoever. It gets back to what they said, uh, Jim Jones, they said they gave Kool-Aid and poison them, right? And, they, and now they've gotten determined they've been drinking the Kool-Aid. So they, they're thinking crazy because they've been getting into the, to the substance. But, you know, the more... 
Now, this is my belief. That there ain't no Bible or nothing like that. So you can take it or leave it. But how many remember sub, uh, subliminalism? You remember what that was all about? Mm -hmm. Subliminal messaging? Yeah. You remember subliminal messaging? Yeah. Remember when they, they said people would play something backwards on a record? And it would be what it called a psych, a, a psychological suggestion. Mm -hmm. they, they said they were doing that even in the drive-in movies. And people would be listening to the music, looking at the show, but real quick it would be something, go get popcorn, yeah. go get a toast, go get a drink. <laughs> Man, I feel like some popcorn. I feel like getting a drink. <laughs> they may be going to the store. Let me see what this said. Maybe I can buy this. Just buy. Then you get home and say, "What? Well, get this? <laughs> Got a whole bunch of junk at the house." But you're buying because you think that's what you wanted. Subliminal, subliminal messaging. Now they said they outlawed it, right? Yeah, right. The <laughs> and the commercials, the thing, you know. I'm, I'm thinking, I said, you know what, the more you look at this stuff, the more you listen to this stuff, not only buying, you're going to start thinking some stuff. That's not right. It's called Amazon Prime. They call it Amazon Prime. That's right, that's a new thing. Amazon Prime. You get in there, look, when you click on that stuff, you don't know what else is popping up on that screen. You can't see it. They send this stuff to you. I'm going to tell you one other thing. They, they even admit to this. Oh, yeah. yeah. You better not look for something. Right. Exactly. You look for something. I said, I just want to see how much something is. Yeah, Man, you get off that thing. They'll be sending you. Every time you open the page, they're going to have that up there. You know you can get this. Too. And not only that, don't let them get your phone number. Mm -hmm. No, they ain't going to get it. They're going to get it from DMV. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I got so-and-so. He like this. Give me his phone number. Okay. DMV now. Give him, give him the phone number. And then you wonder, why, where are these calls coming from? Why are they calling me? Where did they get my number from? Hello. And DMV said, yeah, we sell it. We make plenty of money off of that stuff. And, came to, and people are like, I can't do nothing about that. That's the government. They just sold me down the river. To, to, to the merchandisers. And they got algorithms, digital algorithms that, that, that actually, this is a computer. They don't need a man figuring it out. The computer do that. Oh, so and so, say, they even said the word. Okay, send them all that. He even looked at that, looked at this. And they'll be sending you stuff you need. Well, how do they think that I want this? Yeah. Then you got people thinking crazy, and you wonder why. Okay? Now, this is why getting in God's word, getting in prayer, we talking about getting, now you are clean through the what? Word. word. This is important. Especially, that, you know, I'm, I'm talking to the choir now. We know this, but we can't. Negate it or look at it at a small scale. We got to stay in God's word. That's the only truth there is. When you actually look down at it, that's the only true truth. If the truth, if, if Jesus said, uh, you, you stand on the, the truth, and the truth shall do what? It'll yeah, set you free from all the crazy. We need God's word more than ever. This ain't, and it ain't no joke. We wonder why we're thinking the way, we feel in the way, we feel disgusted, we feel rejected, and we feel so bothered. Getting God's word, it puts things in the right perspective. Now, so, John Dewey said, reject all absolute unchangeable truth. <coughs> there is no absolute unchangeable truth. He believed that final truth was illusionary. There is no real truth. So in other words, Jesus is a lie. <clears throat> man can't come up with no truth because man's heart is desperately wicked anyway because man is looking for truth where? in the world system and so if Jesus said I am the way to what? truth and the life there is truth in Christ that is truth 
But their belief to say that is, don't believe in true truth, educated people. Let the dumb ones run to the other side. They call us dumb, you know. You're all not educated. You don't have no PhD and doctorates. And you don't go to the same place that they go or talk to the same people they talk to. So y'all don't know. But guess what? It ain't we don't know. Who doesn't know? They don't know. And they don't know what we know. And, and it, God even tells us what, what they're doing, why they getting like that. Okay. Now we get up to the, from the 20s, 1920s to the 60s. That was the sexual revolution. Then in 1980s, Hollywood jumped on the bandwagon. It's still on the bandwagon, isn't it? Man, they leading the parade. They the Pied Piper. They blowing the, whip, blowing the horn and two. What, what, what was that uh, story about the Pied Piper? He got all the rats out of the city, blowing the pipe, and they were falling. I thought that was the children. That was the children. children. Oh, yeah, got the children to follow. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, but... <laughs> no, he did get rid of the rats, though, didn't he? But then they ain't want to pay him or something? And, and, and then he said, oh, I fix y'all. He started playing a different tune. And I got all the children following me. So now, the, now all the world, they blowing the toot, tooting the horn, and the world is what? Hollywood is the Pied Piper. Everybody wants to know, got magazines, so-and-so said this and doing that, and everybody all enamored with who is doing what, gossip. It, this is everything God just said don't get caught up in. Mm -hmm. This is what the world is looking to. Look at the TV show. Look at the crazy shows. Up. All they want to do is gossip. Mm -hmm. Wendy, what, Wendy Williams? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Talking about somebody's business and all of this. Their life messed up, and they want to talk about other folks' life. Mm -hmm. And everybody else wants to what? Hear it. Hear. Yeah, whisperers. On top of everything else that's going on, go, the judge shows. Yeah. Poor, the stuff that people are listening to, and they want to get it, they just want to be seen. Come, I believe they just make up the old stories. Yeah. Just to get people all worked up. Ooh, they did this and said that. And this is what people want to yeah. what? They're, they're blowing the whistle, blowing the pipe, and they're following me. More values drop down like what? The Great Depression. So, it all starts, that's the man talking about it. But God talked about this in Romans way back in the day. He explained exactly how and why this stuff is going to be like this. And where we are, and how bad it's been getting. We're talking about the last days now. This is this is getting to the point that ain't a thing that he not only didn't miss, but it had been elevated. Again, remember how those of us have been living a, a, a good little while. We've seen the change in society, people's thinking. We've seen it. We can we can see it progressing. To the point even when it gets to where we are, man, I ain't never heard of this. And we thought we saw everything, didn't we? And heard everything. What well, we haven't. And everything that God said is going to happen, especially in Revelations. The last days, the tribulation. It ain't hard to believe it is. In the last days, he's going to send them a delusion and a strong delusion that they'll believe or what? Well, I guess you look around and say, hey, that, that's right now, ain't it? Right now. Ain't that many people going to believe a lie? Back in the day, we might have said that. So, yeah, we got a few groups going on around. But now we got almost half a country. And then half the universe. Believing a lie. I said, oh, God ain't got to do much, does it? That's the easy one, huh? But, Turn to page number three. We'll talk about this for a few few minutes. Then we'll stop. Romans chapter one. And the thing about this chapter, this is one we need to, in a sense, 
get very not only familiar with, but get it ingrained. Because when we rub what's happening in the world today, it won't just set us off or get us caught off track. It's almost like we expect this. We expect it. But we go down to verse 20 of Romans 1.21. This is that area of scripture that we should not, we should not only hold on to, but to re refresh our standing and thinking because of the iniquity that's abounding in this world, that it doesn't shake us to the point that we get all upset or, you know, what is this? What's going on? This is what, why? You, you ever ask yourself, man, why are they talking like what? But not only, we might not say it, but. What does the rest of the world say? Why are you doing that? Why are they saying this? Why well, one minute you said one thing and the next minute you say something else? Why? Even the news commentators, they're supposed to have all the sense. Huh? Why are they doing that? And God said, I told you why, but you're not listening. Right? Why is it they can't listen? They won't listen. I mean, simple, logical, make sense stuff. Now, don't make no sense. They're talking stuff. Man, this don't make no kind of sense. Why would you even say that? How can you make that stand? How could you even follow a person that's like that? It's just totally obvious, isn't it? And you say, what's wrong with them? Here it is, right here. Whenever we say, why are these people like that? Here it is. God's word. Why they think like this. Verse 21. Because that when they, what? You knew God. Thanks. Most of these old folks know who God is. Most of them came out. Of, the sad thing is the ones who are saying the craziest is the ones that are supposed to be super what? Religious and no God and evangelical. Right? Yeah. They knew God. They know God. They they most 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 of the people came from a, a family or a, a upbringing that included the things of God. But what didn't they do? They're not going to glorify God. They're not going to, they can say that stuff and they know it's against the, the principles of God. They are even people who represent the things of God. They're not giving God any glory. Who, who are they giving glory to? Man. A man. A person. An idea. A philosophy. A party. You're not glorifying God doing that. Once we start glorifying anything outside of God, we done lost the glory. So, they didn't want to glorify God. Neither were what? Thankful. thankful. Boy, they ever, none of them are satisfied. Not thankful for nothing. Not grateful for what they have, where they come I'm from, or where they're going. They're not thankful. They're not thankful for the things of God, the wisdom of God. They're not thankful for his word or upbringing. Matter of fact, the majority of the people today are blaming, especially the parents who try to bring them up in, in the church, and they blame them for all their problems. Yep. How many have heard that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Putting it on Facebook. How Putting it on Facebook, it? yeah. Blaming them. Blaming the parents, trying to raise you up. In that. So they know God. They don't glorify the thing. I've heard some of them say, God ain't never done nothing for me. Ain't done nothing for me. All that, yeah, I did it myself. I was listening to, uh, I think I was sharing this with Portia. Guys that just wanted, there's three of them, just one, one of the heats. First one said, man, I give God the glory for everything that I got. Hmm. You know, I just think, he kept on saying that. Then he went to the next guy. He said a little something deep, I said, man, it was the number of the Lord that got me here. The third one said, man, I thank myself for what I did. I had to work hard for this. This is what I did. And I said, man, hey, you can see the difference. Yes. Me, myself, I. And that's 
typical of what people think today. I, back in the day, you were working at Randall, I could not forget. One guy was, you know, trying to witness to, hey, God, he never done nothing for me and all this and blah, blah. I think what happened, he got in an accident. Like the messed his legs up. Could better. Man, when that guy got back, he said, man, I, I just thank the Lord now. I said, oh, oh now you thank the Lord. You see what I'm saying? The Lord, well, you got to keep praying for the folks. The Lord got a way of reaching them. But don't give up. Because, but this is just a symptom because they knew him, didn't glorify him. They weren't thankful for what the Lord had done, had given them. But became what? Vain, vain. vain means empty. And they're what? How do you think and perceive and look at things is very empty. It's empty to the point that you're trying to hold on to something, trying to reject one thing that's full to get something out of this world. And you ain't gonna get nothing out of this world but trouble. Mm -hmm. If you get anything, you're gonna last for what, a few seconds. Mm -hmm. And don't blame God for it. Because the thing of it is, God can take whatever the world throw at us and, and, and give us glory in it and be thankful that he's where? Right there where it's going through this mess. Mm -hmm. And give us the grace to get out. How many times has the Lord gotten us out of some mess that the world has gone through and we've been able to get through it? Huh? Well, maybe not so, but I don't know. Thank the Lord. Man, the Lord brought, I said, Lord, how did you get me out of this? It was messed all up, but you came through. I'm thankful. But when, I, when, when you start saying, man, the Lord did this, and the Lord did this, and, uh, there was one brother, he, he started going to that cemetery, uh, seminary. Over in Richmond. Man, 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 I ain't never had so, so much trouble. I, I was doing better off before I got saved. I got, got to know the Lord. I looked at him and said, Man, you all messed up. And it messed them up. Look like to me, they would encourage you over there. Now they talking so much junk over there that ain't right. That's his conclusion. You see? These are places that are actually putting out ministers to go to these churches, and this is what they're putting them. Remember the poison I told you about? Yeah, they ain't passing out a vaccine. They're passing out the COVID, the spiritual COVID. And they're getting them sick, taking money from the folks, giving them false hopes, telling them that they got to sow a seed to get a seed and all this old crazy this is stuff that is not, God is not from the Word. How do you know it's not from Read the Word, you'll see it ain't from the Word. Right. I don't care all the little cliches you, you say, it sounds so good and so spiritual. That is not of God. And you'll see the fruit by the fruit they bear. Right. By the fruit they bear. Stick to the Word. So, they, are, they became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was dark. dark. You get dark. Backsliders that say they know the Lord, and you wonder how man you used to serve the Lord, be grateful for things. Now all of a sudden, you you're like that. Now backslider can get like this, but then there are some people who will never say to start with. But even a backslider, I mean, you know the Lord, but you can get dark. You can get in a dark hole because you what turned away from the things of God. This is why it's important for us at this day and time. We got to get settled. Steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Don't slow down. Just because the world gone crazy. Just because your family gone crazy. Just because some of the brothers and sisters you thought was, was with you, they, they might have fell off the wagon. They might catch up and jump on that and help them up when they get up. Some have fallen off, but they got back on, right? We gotta remember that. You can get there in a dark place. Don't mean they lost now, especially if you're a believer. This is why the Lord said those who uh, restore such a one that fall in the spirit of what? Meekness. Because these things can happen to us. All right. 22 to 23. Then we're gonna stop. B. What else did they do? Change the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made like unto a what? Corrupt. See, that's 
when they get all into imagery and, and, and lifting up symbols and things more so than actually God, God is incorruptible in himself. He don't need all of that. Remember I was saying why we need to believe the word? Because the word of God, the word of God don't need defending, does it? We got to stand on his word and what he said. And don't look for a man and, and, and try to compare God to an incorruptible man. This is why we really have to be careful about watching Mama Hollywood. Hollywood put more stuff up. Oh, man, they made movies about Moses. Man, they, they made the Ten Commandments. They made all this. Let me tell you something. You look at that mess in a second. One of the worst depictions of God I've seen was one of them was supposed to have been Moses, he talking to God as a little boy. He talking to God, and God talking to him as, as, in the image of a little boy. Sitting there arguing with God because he's a little boy. Wait a minute. I said, y'all are just lost. It isn't going on to your own imagination. We got we to gotta be kept up. One of them had, God is a lady I living out in the cabin. A black lady lives out in the cabin. Going in, and, and, and hey, that was God he was talking to. The shack. Yeah, the shack. I don't care who wrote it. People, as soon as somebody says somebody wrote something, they just think it's all right. It ain't all right. Start listening to God's word. Because a person writes a book, don't make him an expert. Stop trying to put out here what God is and what he act like and what he thinks. God will tell you exactly what he thinks in his word. If he ain't said it in his word, don't believe it. Matter of fact, don't even try to look at it. Leave it alone. Now that you're strong enough to look at it and be encouraged that this mess is a mess. Other than that, don't look at it because you can come out, oh, I wonder if God looks like that. Hmm. I ain't think about that. See? Who didn't think about that? I. And don't get two or three other people thinking like that. Then I read a couple of other books. You messed up then too. You know, going back up to verse 21. Heart was what? Dark and we gotta understand Satan has a right to talk. Oh yeah. We don't know we got that. We know that. Satan got yeah, Satan got writers. Got all kinds of Satan got all he got music that, that he puts out there. Philosophy, everything that, that's against the things of God, you better believe Satan's orchestrating it. When they when they passing out the COVID, spiritual COVID, he's out there uh, uh, passing it out, giving them bags and bottles. Because he works with who? Who are the other two enemies? The flesh, world, and the what? Yeah. So when we, when these, this is what happened. God said, hey, man, don't be surprised. This is what's happening. This is what I told. Because these things are happening in the hearts of men. Now, corruptible man. And not only that, to birds and four-footed beasts. People go out there in the place thing they call the burning man. I think I told you about this before, didn't I? There's a place out in, I forgot the, the, the state is in. They didn't have it last year because of COVID. Oh, they try to be but anyway, when they have it, I mean, this place, thousands and thousands of people. A lot of folks haven't heard about it. Burning Man is where all these whatever you believe in, the, uh, about gods or anything, trees, uh, you just think, anything, people people running around there, dressed up all kinds, they even make a whole temple out there. And they call it the Burning Man. This is where all of these different religions can come all together. And it's like a, a big prayer. And they believe in it. Somebody ever got the little children running around with feathers on and, and putting the incense out and, and going through their little thing or whatever it is they believe in. But that's their God. That's the way they perceive the things of God. Yeah, that, that's been happening. I mean, that, that, that has been documented. I've seen the videos and pictures and these people running around with all of this stuff. Thousands of them. And they call it the burning. No, no, we ain't never heard it because what? That's crazy. <laughs> Don't feel bad like you left out. <laughs> Say praise the Lord. Yeah. Because if you was walking dark enough, you would heard it. And if you have heard about it, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it's, 
scared me. I said, man, Craig, these folks are doing it out here. But the Lord, didn't the Lord say it was going to happen? Yeah. Burning Man. I said, ooh, Burning Man. And a lot of people in the world haven't heard about it either. But if you out there and all caught up in paganism, paganistic beliefs and stuff, they, they, they bring in every little paganistic belief there is. And you come out and show you what, what you know and, you know, and, that's, and they have themselves a good time being lost. But because it said in the corruptible and birds, four-footed beasts, and what? Creeping things. People start worshiping calves in certain certain cultures, right? Oh, yeah. They work, they worship birds, they worship bugs, snakes, snakes anything, any creeping thing. They make gods of it. That's when you that's what you see at the burning man. This is what they worship. Now, we're gonna stop right there. But why? They knew God, but did not want to what? Glorify God. Check ourselves out, man. Lord, I want to give you glory. I want to be thankful for what you've given me and done and how you've been working. And don't let our imagination get caught up in everything that everybody's saying, even our own imagination. But get caught up in what the Spirit of God is telling. Remember, in order to, get, to keep ourselves clean, there's something, if we have a desire to do something, and we really want to do something for the Lord, don't forget that the Lord said, go out there and do your best to do it. Did he say that? What, but what did he say? What? I didn't say it enough. John 15, 5. Turn to that. Huh? We can't do nothing. We can't deal with this world. We can't deal with our thinking. We can't let all of this crazy, even though they're drinking Kool-Aid all the left and the right, and even we walking in and through it. We can we can have it. Through Christ we can what? <laughs> through Christ. He did not say through my faith on my will, on my desire, on my fortitude, but only through Christ. Only through Christ. That is our shield, our sword, our protection. We hold on to Christ, all the rest that comes with him, doesn't it? The Spirit of God, the Father, God the Father, the power of God, the word of God, the promises of God, all is attached. We got to hold on to Him. Like we end up drunk. You ever think about yourself being on a boat in an ocean, the swaying and everything is the waves crashing and all. You ain't got one thing to hang on to. But if you turn it loose, you're gonna what? You're gonna drown. Okay, how good a swimming you are. You will drown. That's what we have to look at. What's going on today? If we hold on to Jesus, we can hold on to his word. Amen? Amen. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that through Christ we can do all things. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that for your word that warns us about the vanity and the imaginations of our hearts and minds, how it can get so taken away if we don't put you first. You said, seek first the kingdom of God, your righteousness, and then all these other things will be added. But Lord, help us to stop trying to add on ourselves to do things by our own wisdom and will and desire, but to stand on what you have, can lead us to. And we thank you, Lord, for in this life, especially this day and time, that we have you that we can turn to in the Word of God, the Spirit of God, the power of God, and God the Father, that we have victory through you. So, Lord, undertake for us today as we have to leave. We pray for, for all those that are here. The, the beginning here just says, Lord, give me the strength, grace, and wisdom to follow you according to your will. Let me see your hands. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word, for your wisdom, for your grace, and for your peace and strength and keeping power. For us in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. If you would turn with me in your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 16, 17, and 21, I will be reading. And then we'll alternate the reading. Say amen. Amen. Uh, Begin in verse 16. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Verse 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils, you cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. If you turn with me to chapter 11, starting at verse 20, we're alternating reading to the end. <clears throat> Beginning at verse 20. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. What? Have you not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise you the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, carry one for another. Verse 34 together. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. <clears throat> At this time, we have an, an, another hymn. You can uh, remain. Oh, I'm sorry, not now. Uh, prayer of Confession. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28, it says, But let a man or woman examine himself, and so let him or her eat of that bread and drink of that cup. So we'll have a short period of examination or silent prayer. Let us pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we have a hymn. Hymn number 118, When I Survey. 
may may see it as we sing this. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for this communion service. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the bread that was broken for your body, that represents your body, dear Lord, that was broken for, for many, dear Lord. And we just ask, Lord, that even as we partake of this bread, Lord, that we do, Lord, show um, remembrance until you come. Amen. And we just thank you for all that you're going to do, Father, this day. In Jesus' name, amen.
And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do ye in remembrance of me, for as often as ye eat this bread, you do show the Lord's death till he come. If everyone would turn with me to hymn number 176, we'll be singing, Break Thou the Bread of Life, 176. Hearts, would you give thanks for the fruit of the vine that represents the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? Let us pray. Dear most gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you again today. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity, the Heavenly Father. Thank you for the word and thank you for the opportunity to break bread, the Heavenly Father. And thank you for the fruit of the vine, Lord, that represents the blood that was shed at the cross, the Heavenly Father. Thank you for your blood as it covers our sins, Lord. In Jesus' name, pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 <clears throat> After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death 
till he comes.
was me.